guys welcome back to my channel I'm Hamasa and on this corner of the internet we look at mental well-being as well as emotional well-being and personal development this week I wanted to discuss how I moved out of my parents' house because culturally for Afghan people where my parents are from and I'm from um, it's not very common for young women or even young men that are not married to move out of their homes so I know that this isn't so much to do with mental well-being but it's definitely part of personal development and it's definitely something that I find that people who are of similar backgrounds to me um, find it very difficult to navigate so I've had plenty of messages on this um, and I wanted to discuss this with you guys so if you haven't followed my page before please subscribe and uh, please like and comment on this video so that you guys are up to date with all my content so how did I move out of my parents house it was a very long process and it was not easy so when you guys think that your parents will kill you and they will just go crazy and they will give you the emotional blackmail and all the rest of it I definitely experienced that to some extent more so in one some parts than others but trust me I went through all the emotional ups and downs of first gathering the courage to move out or to tell my parents that I wanted to move out then actually taking that step and doing it then maintaining it so all in all it was the whole emotional roller coaster that you guys anticipate but was it worth it a hundred percent would I do it all over again a million and ten percent moving out was one of the best things that I did for myself and for my relationship with my parents we've come leaps and bounds since I've moved out and we built this trust and respect with each other so let me tell you guys how it all started the first time that I had to be away from home for a long time was when I was 18 years old and I was Miss England so I got sent to Miss World and the Miss World pageant is over a month at that the year that I was Miss England it took place in China in Sanya so I had to go and live in China for a month with the Miss World organization and the whole crew and everything so that was one of the most hardest experience of my life which I will get into in another video and tell you guys all about my Miss World experience because I think it's super interesting well at least I do anyway um, and it's just so different to what you think it'd be but that's a whole different topic so I'll get back on track I went to China and I had to stay there for a month. Of course, my parents were very hesitant with this whole setup, but it was Miss World. So it was something very, like a good achievement for me, a great platform for me. So that's why they were okay with me doing that. And, you know, it was part of the procedure and they knew what it entailed when I entered Miss England. So they were supportive. And of course I was taken care of. I was very safe and secure. I was with a team there. And I was with 104 other contestants from all over the world. So. You know the cameras and press were on us and my parents felt like I'm taken care of that was the first time but it gave me a taster of what it's like at 18 to be independent so I really got a taste of just being away and making my own decisions but of course I knew that it was not even an option for me to move out at that point when I was 18 so I came back carried on working when my reign as Miss England was over I wanted to go to university so moving to university was the first time i officially told my parents that i want to live out and be away for three years to study now this is when the emotional blackmail really started from my mom i wanted to study advertising and brand management so i found this course it was in surrey university of the Great arts in surrey and i really wanted to go and study there i loved the little town it was this beautiful picturesque village I felt great there because I was working as Miss England before then, I had loads of media attention and I just wanted a low-key life. So I applied to the university as my first choice, didn't say anything because I thought if I get it then that's when I'll cross that bridge but if I don't get it there's no point rocking the boat and telling my parents that I'm moving out. I managed to get into the university I wanted so I came over to my mom and dad and I said look guys this is what I want to study, I want to live in Surrey and I'm going to university and I remember my mom just looking at me and thinking haha very funny as if you're gonna get up and do that and she just completely dismissed me my dad was started asking me questions about my course so I showed him the booklet and I said this is what I want to do and he said oh okay 
that's great because both of my parents are intellectuals and academics they've both studied so me going into university and studying a topic that I wanted wasn't an issue to either one of my parents because that's what they wanted me to do they just didn't think that I'd choose a uni that's outside of London and that would mean that I have to live out so my mom obviously was not having it was very very dismissive of everything I said until it came time to like listen I need to now pay for my accommodation she just wasn't accepting it. So I had to sit, uh, sit her down and she said to me, if you move out of this house, just remember you don't have a home to come back to. If you make that decision and walk out, you're not coming back here. And I looked at my dad and I was like, my dad was always trying to just take a step back and let him, because he knew that it was my mom who had a problem with. So it was her that I had to convince. I said, mom, look, you went away, you studied, you got your degree and you're fine. Why can you not give that trust to me and let me prove to you that I'll be okay? I want to study this, I want to move out, and I'm going to do it, so I hope that you will support me. And it was that decision, I had to make a decision for myself, and whether, of course, it, it was all through communication, it was never like, listen guys, I'm doing this, it was never that. I wanted them to want to support me. I wanted to communicate with them, but I also knew that I had enough confidence in myself and in my decision that regardless of what my parents said at that time, I was going to take that step and I was going to work on the relationship and fix it, but I had to I had to stand my ground and I had to not fall into the emotional blackmail. I know that's what my mom was doing. I know she'll be fine. She's just trying to make me feel guilty for moving out. So I had to get all of that. I had to have a pep talk with myself and really, really sit down and think, do I really want to make this decision? I knew I wanted to do that. So I just told them and it was university. I had a good reason to move out. I wasn't going to Gallivant. I, I was going to study. So I told them and I said, look, I'm going to do this. So please, I would really appreciate it if you were supportive. My mom stopped talking to me for a bit and she just wasn't having it. She still helped me move, of course, because she's amazing. But she at that time was very, very upset and she was just sulking and I felt awful. So I promised her that I would be back every single weekend to see her. So in the three years that I studied at university, I probably didn't come back about three or four weekends that's in three years. I, without fail, if I ever had to stay to finish off a project or something, I would get a call on Friday evening and my mom would be like, do you remember us? You have a family, we're alive, where are you? It was constantly making me feel guilty. But because I had made that promise to her, for her to allow me to move out in the first place, I had to keep my end of the bargain. I had to keep my word and prove to her that, listen, just because I've moved out, I'm still going to be here and I'm still going to come and eat your cooking and I'll be there whenever you need me. So I had to prove to her to earn that trust that I am going to hold my word. As all parents, that's their worst fear to happen. I hope she doesn't go off the rails. We hope she doesn't go mad. Um, I remember my parents saying, we hope she doesn't come back having done something stupid. You know, what if, what if? Of course, that's every parent's worry. And I knew that they felt like that, so I had to prove them wrong. So because I maintained that trust and I maintain, I stuck to my word, I kept, kept coming home, I, I graduated university, I made great friends, my parents met my friends, um, I didn't go off the rails, I didn't do anything stupid because my parents had given me enough and I also really appreciated the fact that they did let me move out. So the one thing I didn't want to do is mess that up. This was the first time that they've allowed me out of like my baby cage, my little bird's nest properly without an official like entourage with me and a group of, a group of cameras. So I really wanted to show them that no, you, this is, you know, I'm gonna make you guys proud. So I graduated from university and then the fear set in that what now I have to move back home and now I've been so used to living out by myself that I don't want to move back home. Came back home, stayed there for a couple months, but then I was always modeling. I had started modeling at 14 and I continued doing so while, um, while I was studying and when I was miss, uh, missing England, I still modeled on the side all the time. 
So an opportunity came up for me to move to Cape Town and live in Cape Town for three months for a season of modeling. So because I was so good at uni and like did everything my parents wanted me to do and had nothing to hide and kind of really earned their trust, it wasn't that much of a big deal when I told my mom, look, I want to go and now I had a choice. I graduated, I either could go into my career in what I studied, which was advertising, or continue modeling. But I just wanted to get the modeling out of my system and then go into a job. 10 years later, here I am still modeling, never went into an office job, but that's again another story. But at the time, I just wanted to continue modeling. So when I told my parents, look guys, I graduated, I have my degree, I did what you wanted me to do, but now let me just get this out of my system. For the first time, I can do it full time. I don't have any education to stop me from going and living abroad and working abroad so let me do this and where like I said I was so good at university my parents said okay you know what go for three months to Cape Town do what you need to do went to Cape Town had the best time but still like I worked I kept my head down I came home and that's where my parents started to see a pattern that no she can handle situations she's gone to now a different continent to the tip of Africa in South Africa away, miles away from home, whether she got sick, upset, angry, hurt, whatever it was, she dealt with it and she's back and she's in one piece and she hasn't let us down. So when I started doing that a few times, they now trusted me enough to know that one, I can run a household and be responsible for myself and two, I could, I'm not going to let them down. I'm not stupid. I'm not going to do something like they've taught me better than that. So then I came back, I lived in the UK, I continued working as a model and it was very difficult for me living where my parents lived and attending castings and shoots in central London. They're a little bit out of town, so public transport isn't that well linked, like we don't live that close to a tube station. So it was very difficult for me at the time and I was too young to drive, so the commute would take me hours. So I would turn up to the shoot exhausted without even having to start the shoot because I had to give myself so much time and I was working full time as a model and it was becoming very difficult for me to commute back and forth. So when, again, I sat my parents down and I said, look guys, I need to move out and go into London so I can work. Like you've let me do this work now for a little bit. You know, I still have a few more years to make the most of it. Let me give it my all. Um, they were like, okay, fine. We're not happy about it. Again, you know, it was never like, great, we support you, let us help you. Now it's like that. But at that time, when I was in my early mid to mid twenties and I was saying all of this, I hadn't earned that trust. I, w I hadn't matured, although I thought I was the most smartest person in the room, but I was not, I know that. So therefore my parents just were very hesitant at each step. But then that's how I really officially moved out and haven't been back home is when I had to work in central London, the commute was becoming difficult. I moved out, I rented an apartment with a flatmate and I started living and working. And then years went by and I fell into a routine and my parents started seeing that I'm absolutely fine. I haven't lost my way. I haven't lost my shit. I have good people around me, I have good friends, that that's when they started just giving me that space of becoming an individual by myself and growing up and making mistakes and failing and learning from those. And it took me a good few years because what happens is when you live at home and there are certain things that your parents don't want you to do, but they're not necessarily bad things, they just culturally our parents don't understand don't don't can't wrap their heads around it can't relate to it so they just say no but it's like you attending a friend's birthday for example there's nothing wrong with you attending a friend's birthday but when you're young and you tell your afghan or asian or brown parents that i want to go to a party straight away they assume that there's drugs alcohol boys everything bad, explosives even, like, you know, you name it. Everything bad that could be in one place might be there. But that's obviously not the case, we know that. So what happens when things like that happen at home and you're living at home? You end up lying and living a double life. 
and you end up developing this resent towards your parents because you can't live your authentic self. You have to make excuses. What end up, ends up happening is that if you're living at home and you're living this double life, you will just lie and lie and lie and it creates a wedge between you and your parents because your parents know you're lying. As much as we think we're smarter than them, we're not. They're always on to us and they always know what's going on. So they're questioning you more. You're more resentful. There's this bitterness, tension. When you reach a certain age, in our cultures and countries, what happens is that when a girl reaches her late teens, early 20s, and also with a guy too, you then get married. So you naturally move out of your home and have your own home with your partner. But that's not the case in today's day and age and in the societies that we live in in the West. People don't get married that young. But they, that doesn't mean that they're still a child and they have to live under their parents' rules and roof. So that, that's when you start losing your identity and you don't learn how to make decisions and you don't make the mistakes that are vital for, you, for your survival for you to learn from because you're always in this shell protected in your, in your family's home. Now, I'm not here encouraging anyone to move out or not to move out. Every person's different and what necessarily worked for me doesn't mean will work for other people and vice versa. But because you guys messaged me and asked me how I did it and how I feel about it, this is my genuine opinion and my story. This is how I did it. And what happened is, as I started growing up and making these mistakes and understanding my parents' traumas, understanding why they did the things they did, said the things they did a lot better because I managed to become an individual myself, make my own mistakes, like I started adulting. And therefore, I understood what it meant for my parents to be adulting. So I developed a whole newfound respect, understanding, empathy and compassion for both of my parents, their upbringings and their traumas. And so in turn, it's improved my relationship with both my mom and dad immensely. Because one, they see me as an individual, as a mature, wise, grown adult because I've lived out and had my own household for several years now and I haven't let them down. I haven't messed up. So I'm capable, they trust that now. And for me, going through the ups and downs and going through these mistakes makes me understand all the things that my parents did and didn't do for us growing up. And I appreciate and respect each part of it because I have that compassion now. I wouldn't have had that had I lived at home and been protected in this bubble and I would have always just looked up at my parents that you should know better, you're the adult, like. But no, that's not the case because I have to be the adult now and I, sh I assure you, there are so many things that I don't know better that I make mistakes on. So like I said, just because something worked for me doesn't mean it'll work for you. But my advice to you guys is if you wanna move out, the best thing you could do is communicate because our, you have to make our parents understand. Our parents at the end of the day want what's best for us. It may not seem that way. They may not communicate that or express that the correct way to us. It doesn't mean that they wanna harm us. So as soon as you understand this dynamic and you try and explain and communicate this to them that look, just because I, like there is certain age that I will reach that I'm going to be my own adult and I'm going to be my own person and my own identity and my own likes and dislikes. And I'm losing myself by being here. It's getting in the way of my job. For me, it was my job because of the community it was very difficult, be it creativity, be it career, life path. Like you need to now, that's why with animals and things like the birds push their little um, chicks out of the nest because once they reach a certain age, it's just not feasible for like, let's say in your family, there's three of you siblings who are all in your twenties. So three adults and then your parents. So five adults with different habits, with different likes and dislikes, with different wants and needs, living under one roof, and the one person's rules, because for us it'd be my mom's rules, so every household's different. It's just not, of course things are going to kick off. And what happens is, just like I said, it creates wedges between your relationships with your siblings and parents. 
and also you will not learn these essential life skills that you need for you to then maintain and have your own family in the future because you haven't been that given the opportunity to make these mistakes and learn from them you've been protected in a shell at your parents' house and then you've been thrown in a marriage who's again someone else's house so where where are you in this where is your identity in this and that's why it's important that once you do get a cert- to a certain age and you've and the other my other important piece of advice to you guys would be to have your finances straight. May understand how expensive living out is, how many bills and cancel tax, TV license, all the things that you don't really think about when you're living at your parents' house. But we have these expenses and we have to be able to pay them off and be independent enough. So look after your finances, get that prepared. And when you're ready to move out, or if you feel like you've had enough, You may be saving money, but you're not saving your sanity. So remember that. So the best way to do is to prepare your finances, be ready for it, and then speak to them and explain to your parents. And when you make a decision, you've got to be strong enough to stick with it and go with it and maintain it. So when you've definitely made your decision and you feel like you're ready, sit them down, tell them how you feel, explain to them that I need to do this for myself and you have to give me that trust. You have to trust your parenting skills that you've taught me enough that I will not lose my head if I don't live at home. Like if you trust yourself and trust me, give me that opportunity to prove myself to you. And I'm hoping that with that, your parents are able to give you that chance for you to earn it because that's all we could ask for. We have to prove to our parents that we are capable and it's not going to be easy, but if you've really made a decision and you have really, really are ready to move out, you've got to communicate and you've got to do what's right for you. You make a decision, you stick with it, you look after yourself and you do it. And if your parents really love and support and trust you, they will come around and they will be there for you. So I hope that I know this is a lot to take in and it's more my personal story. Like I said, what works for me doesn't mean that would work for other people, but I just wanted to share with you guys how I did it and what I think about it and how much it has benefited my life overall and my relationship with my parents and just the way they see me. Like my parents are my friends now and I would have never been at this stage had I continued living at home because I would have ended up presenting them. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to follow and like and comment on this video and I'll see you guys here again next week.